Well, several weeks ago, months ago actually, we um, we started a series called Trans Transformed into His Image, and you know we we hit three of those, and then we just of course we do um, we speak on what we believe we need to speak on any given night, and uh, you know just get in a rut once we get into a a series, and so there's been a lot going on, different things out of my heart and uh, to speak on, and of course Shelley's spoken number numerous times and. And so, but that doesn't mean we're done with this. I don't. I don't think you know we're on number four, and so um, we're gonna spend some time there tonight. I have something specific to cover tonight. Let's look at Second Corinthians three verse seventeen. We'll recap a little bit. So, kind of hook uh, back up with this message and move forward. Second Corinthians three seventeen says, "Now the Lord is the Spirit." And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, but we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We're being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory. And the Amplified says, we all, with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of God, are progressively being transformed into His image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord. So we're being transformed progressively. It's a process into His image, into the image of Christ, Uh, one degree of glory to even more glory. So just little by little, we're changing. Everybody say, I'm changing. Now we're changing for the better. So you don't change overnight. So we we shouldn't expect everybody else to change overnight. You know, sometimes we're, I don't know anybody else change overnight, but we're good with, you know, however long it takes us. Well, no, we all, we're all, like somebody I heard you know, say recently, uh, we all have quirks. And uh, there isn't anybody perfect, okay? We all have quirks, and if you think you don't have quirks, you know, ask somebody that's close to you, <laughs> that lives with you, me, anybody. We all have quirks. We're all, we're all quirky in a little bit, some more quirky than others, but, you know, we're all, we, we all have our, our ways of approaching life, and so, um, you know, need to bear with, with other people because they're bearing with us. But we're all supposed to be uh, changing into His image, and the message, it says, so we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like Him gradually. That doesn't mean stuff can't change quick in some areas, but you know, you're overall, you're going to change gradually as you yield yourself to God's Word, yield yourself to the Spirit of God as you become enlightened with His Word, and then you act on His Word, and you let His Word uh, be the, uh, dominate your life or my life, we're, we're going to be transformed, and we're going to be more like Him. Galatians 4.19 says, My little children, for whom I labor and birth again until Christ is formed in you. For whom I labor and birth again until Christ is formed in you. That's just part of that sentence. But mes- the, the verse 19 says do, in the message, Do you know how I feel right now I, and will feel until Christ's life becomes visible in your lives like a mother in the pain of childbirth? Till Christ's life becomes visible in your lives. As we yield to Him, then you, you see more and more. Jesus in us. That's what we want. We want we want to be different. Amen. We want to be more like him. We want our life to be like Christ's life. We want to be our presence like his presence. We want our influence to be like his influence. We want people to see him in us. We want to be his hands and his feet and his mouth on this earth. That's where the body of Christ. That's what we're we ought to be doing. So we're being transformed. It's a process. Let's read Ephesians 4.11. We read this uh, previously as well, just recapping some of these scriptures. Uh, Ephesians 4.11, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man or mature man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, 
tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. So through, is talking about specifically here, through these gifts that he's given the body of Christ, they're to equip the saints, which is us, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ till we become mature. In uh, the NLT, verse 13 says, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. That's what we're supposed to be doing. What we endeavor to do is becoming mature as we grow in the faith and knowledge of God's Son. In that uh, NLT verse 15, it says, Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of His body, the church. So growing in every way more and more like Christ, like Jesus. In truth. You know, that we just say it and we go to church, but that different areas, we, we're acting like Him. We react like Him. We speak like Him. We treat others like He would. And in every area, we just, we come up. You know, where, where we've, we've act a certain, acted a certain way, we start to let His Word dominate us, and so we don't act that way anymore. Where we said certain things in a situation, we don't say that anymore. We say what He says. We act according to His Word. We're going to speak the Word. We're going to let the love of God dominate us. Uh, that's, you know, love of God shed abroad in our heart, poured out in our heart. The Bible says God is love, so if you're walking in the love of God, you're walking like Him. Jesus always walked in love, always. Even when He was getting people's face, He was walking in love. He was doing what, he, what needed to happen. Well, love will always do the best for the other person. Sometimes, see, people need a good slap in the face, not maybe literally, but they, you know, <laughs> figuratively. Uh, that's the thing that's going to knock, you know, shake them out of whatever trance they're in. You know, God, so we want to, we just want to, we don't want to walk according to the flesh. We want to walk according to our spirit. So that's going to be love. So we ought to grow as Christians, you know, instead of somebody always having to build us up or pray for us, feed us, we're able to help others. That's, we want to grow. We don't want to look at ourselves as dependent all our lives, you know, any more than your children. You don't want them to be dependent on you for the, their whole life. You want them to grow to where they're independent. Now, we're dependent on God, you know, doesn't mean you can, when I'm saying pray for us there, it means, you know, things that you could get, of course, you know, you pray for others that they would continue to see more and, you know, pray for your pastors, pray for your leaders, things like that, but we're talking about in a situation, uh, well, you don't need somebody to always come in and pray for you in that situation, in other words, you can do that praying for yourself in your own life, you're able to get results, you know what needs to happen to grow up. And that's the goal, to be more and more like, like Jesus. And we read this, uh, one definition of being mature spiritually is letting your Bible-formed beliefs determine what you think, say, and do. Of course, that will always be walking in love. So you let your Bible, what, what, it, what, you've, what the, the truth of the Word that's come into your life, you let that dominate you. That's being mature. When you believe something, but you don't let it dominate you, that's called a carnal Christian. You know something, but it doesn't change your life. But when you let it dominate you, you're, you're maturing. You get that on the inside, and your spirit gets built up, and then you let that uh, dominate what you do, and you agree with it. Let's look at Matthew 25, verse 14, this evening. <clears throat> This is Jesus speaking. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and, and delivering his goods to them, or delivered his, his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them 
and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of these servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 24, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Verse 29, For to to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance, or have abundance, but... From him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant to the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this gives the picture that uh, Jesus is illustrating these these individuals who were given um, resources by their master and uh, different different amounts based on how much they could handle. And then they had the opportunity to do something with those resources. And um, if you go back to uh, verse 20, so he gave him the resources, went away, and then he came back. Verse 20, so he who had received five talents came and brought him brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you, had, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. So in other words, he did something with what was given to him. That's the point. He, he used what was given to him, and he gained more. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So he said you were faithful with what you had. And he said, I'm going to make you rule over more. And then the same thing happened with the one that had two talents. And he said the exact same thing. He said, you were faithful. He gained two more, but he did something with what he had. And then, of course, the other person, uh, he just took his talent and he buried it in the ground, didn't do anything with it. And that didn't please the Lord, didn't please the, the master, didn't didn't impress him. He said, you at least should have gone and deposited and got interest then. But the point is that these, these individuals did something with what they had, where they were, and they were able to get more. So they grew, and they developed in their abilities, and now they're ready for even more. You know, we read in, in verse 21, he said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of, of the Lord. I will make you rule over many things. Why? Because you were faithful in what I gave you. You were faithful where you were. And now you're able to handle more. Notice he didn't just say, at the beginning, just show up and say, Hey, you, I'm going to make you rule over many things. You going to make you rule over many things. Any other guy, you're not going to do anything anyway. You know, God knows what we're going to do before we do it. This guy in the story may not, he's human, but God does know. He gives you opportunity anyway. Even though he already knows. He already knows who's going to receive him. He knows who's going to reject him. But you get the opportunity. Nobody's going to be able to say God's unjust. That will not happen. 
So that should just clear up any questions. You know, people get these questions and they think they're being smart or deep. I'm not saying you shouldn't ask questions. We should. Uh, God didn't tell us to ta turn off our brain. But they act like they're, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, like a gotcha question. Well, what about the people that are just in some remote corner and they just don't hear Jesus? What about them, huh? God's faithful. <laughs> and they'll hear the gospel. Uh, God, nobody's going to go to hell without hearing the gospel. Question is, are they doing anything with what they know now? Because the Bible says in Romans, you can just look at the sun and start. I mean, you can look at the creation and know there's a God. What are you doing with that? Are you crying out? Are you seeking after that God? Because there will absolutely, you will have the gospel preached to you. But if you can't recognize there is a God, why do you even need more? There's nobody going to, nobody is going to stand before God and said, you were unjust, I didn't know. That will not happen. God is faithful. So that ought to clear up anything. With anybody that knows the Bible and knows God, you know, you may not know everything, but between here and when they are headed somewhere in the afterlife, they had a chance. Period. You guys just got quiet there? Always. And, it, you know, people can, they make decisions on this earth. You know, what are they, what are they going to believe? What are they going to do with what they have? God, God is just and faithful. No man is going to be able to come to God and say, you were wrong. You didn't give me a chance. I, you were unjust. That's not true. God's faithful. So God knows what we're going to do before we ever do it. He gives us a chance, and, and we have an opportunity to serve Him. Luke 16.10 says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Now, some people think, if I get here, then I'll change the way I'm acting. If I had more money, then I would give. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. If you don't give where you're at, you won't give when you have more. There'll be other stuff to spend the money on. There always is. People, I mean, anybody that's lived long enough think, if I got this raise, then I would. And you know there is stuff knocking at the door that, well, I can spend here, here. And it doesn't take long to go through some X amount raise in, you know, for a year because you're going to you know, increase this area of your life and increase this area of life and increase this area of life. And you think, you know, you, you were thinking, man, if I only got this and you got it, and you're, man, you're like, man, I could use a lot more. Right? You guys going to look at me like... Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Somebody said, well, if I just had more, if I were a millionaire, I'd just be such a giver. No, you wouldn't. The Bible tells you you wouldn't. What are we doing now with what we have? What's, what, what is the, uh, what's our heart attitude? Well, if I, if I just, you know, when I get to a certain point and I have more time, I'll give it. No, no you wouldn't. <laughs> no, there's, have you seen people will find all kinds of stuff to spend their time on? What do we do now with where we're at? This says, who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. Who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. In other words, what you're doing now is determining the way you'll act in the future. Well, if I were the boss, I'd clean up and I'd act different. No, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. The way we're acting now, you you know, like I said before, if I say you, I'm talking about general. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about you, but I'm talking about me. I'm talking about people in general. In other words, we're all in the same boat. <laughs> We've got the same challenges. Uh, nobody's arrived. But we're talking about God's Word. So, you know, the individual thinks, ah, oh, man, you know, I, I know I'm kind of sloppy now, but man, if I got this rule, man, I, I'd, I'd make all the adjustments. I, I know I get in late, but man, if, if I had this, I'd get, on, get in on time. No, you, no, we would not. Start doing it now, where we are now. And we set ourselves up for that next step. That's how you're promoted, that's how we grow. Put into action the word that we know now. Sometimes we think we just need more. That's not the problem. I'm not saying we don't need more knowledge, uh, but what, what do we know now? Some people say, I just need to get more. If I just knew more, then it would solve my problems. Nope. 
It doesn't. I've been to Bible school, and you see people get out of Bible school, <laughs> and you have all this word being pumped in three hours a day, and people get out and act like, and I've heard it said, and I've watched it happen. Uh, you know, you'll revert back to where you were before if you don't put it into practice. And people, you know, you think certain things, if I only read this book, it would help. Well, it might, it might and shed some light, but you still got to walk in it. And if we think, if we're going to ignore what we know today and think more knowledge will solve our problem, you can just see that if I'm not doing what I know now, more knowledge will mean I'm just not doing more that I know now. <laughs> The problem isn't that I have more, it's that I'm not doing what I know. And sometimes it's easier to say, well, I need to read 10 more books. I need to go get in a class than to just look it in the face and say, I know what to do. I just need to do it. I need to get up earlier and do this. I need to just make the effort to do this. It's much easier to go, I'll do that tomorrow. I need to go back to school and just get more knowledge. Not saying we shouldn't get go back to school. If that's what God wants you to do, don't just don't think that's going to solve your problem or my problem. No, if whatever we're doing now, getting more knowledge, it's not going to help us. It, you know, the word of God is truth, but when we get inside, part of how we're going to grow is by acting on. We need to have the truth, and then we need to do something with it. And why do you need more if we if we don't do what we if we don't do something with what we have? Why do we need more? No, we need to do what we know to do. Didn't say it was easy. But we need to act on what we have. We need to do, we need to do our best where we're at with what we have. That's being faithful. Don't say, well, I'm waiting for such and such. Then I'll do it. What are we doing now? You can always do something now. So sometimes we wait for the perfect conditions before we start acting. And if you've lived long enough, you know those rarely, perfect never comes, but even real good conditions rarely line up for you. You just need to start and act on what God told you to do now where you're at. Well, I don't like this. I don't like that. This isn't right. You just be sidetracked for your whole life with that. And you will stay where we are. We're talking about being transformed into His image. God's going to grow us up, but He needs our cooperation. So we need to, to, we need to do something. We need to act where we're at. Well, I, I'll wait till I get up there. Then I'll start. Do no, no, no. You start where you are. We start where we are being faithful here, and it qualifies us for more. It qualifies us to be used by the Lord more, but if we can't do where we're at now, what makes us think that we're the special case? See, that's a lie, and it's, it's backed up a whole lot by the way the world is now, especially in 2023, because you have people that are really young look like they are being uh, moved to the head of the line monetarily, fame-wise, it's always been like that. You know, young, young people love the young rock stars and whatever. You, you notice the rock stars age? It's kind of sad to look sometimes. I mean, we all get old, but sometimes you got these rock bands that, you know, they're still up there. They're, they're trying to look like 20-year-olds, but, you know, they're 60, 70, 80, and just doesn't wear well. <laughs> just doesn't look quite as cool is when they're ripped and young. and Anyway, uh, so it always, you know, the young people always promote the young, but you have it in every sphere, in business and things, where people think, I mean, you got billionaires. Looks like they're at the head of the pack, except doesn't always wear well over time. And so people get this idea. We, you know, we, we, young people think, we, we don't need to listen to these old people, boomers. <laughs> Just that term is so derogatory. It's so dismissive. They can't tell us anything. 
Well, you'll find out. But that's so, that's so anti-Bible. It's so dishonoring to God and His things. People that have been around a while ought to have something to say to people that haven't been around a while. If they're going by what the Word of God said, they, they ought to have something to impart. And if young people think, at we got it, you're just headed for a, a, a wall. <laughs> well, we're special. Every generation thinks that. We, we have it figured out. No, you don't. Nobody has it figured out. You, got, you, you can go by what the Word of God says and do what the Word of God says, where you're at, and be faithful. And you need to be faithful just like everybody else needs to be faithful, and I do. There is no special case. There's no shortcut. There isn't. So people get the idea, especially now, well, look, I mean... Pfft, these old people, they don't know the technology. They don't know what's going on. We got it. We got it figured out, and our ways are better. Don't listen to somebody. I mean, you guys that are 20, 30, don't listen to somebody that's running the same race that you are at the same place and hasn't had, tested anything, and look to them to, to try to you know, go with some new system as if they have it figured out. It's not tested. I mean, it's crazy on social media and stuff. you got 20-somethings telling each other how to parent and this newfangled thing, and they're like, nobody's tried it. But there's variants that have happened before, and it's going to fail just like everybody else fails. But they're telling each other like these old people don't know anything. The Bible is not true. You don't have to spank. You don't have to do anything. You just talk to them like they're an adult, and they'll do it. It's not going to work. But they're listening to each other like we got it figured out, and just the boomers have no clue. <laughs> We, we, there is no special case. We got to listen to God and be faithful where we're at. Amen? Amen? We all have to be faithful, and that's how you're going to grow. And if we just keep, you know, circumventing the, these things and act like we're a special case, we're not going to grow. And then years are going to pass. Pass, pass, and because we don't want to engage and go where we are, we're waiting for the big break. We're waiting to just slingshot up here. We're going we're gonna to circumvent what everybody else does because, you know, pride and the devil will tell you we're special. We don't need to do that. We've got the fast track. We know what to do. No, we need to, we need to do what is God asking us to do now? What does His Word tell us to do and engage there. Be faithful there. Honor God where you're at with what you have. Well, I don't have that much. That doesn't matter. What do you have? Well, I don't have all these talents or I don't have this much. Where, what do you have? And you honoring God with that, what, what else are you going to do besides what you have? You got to start with where you are. What, what else are you going to do? You're not going to go steal something and give it. No, you can't. You have what you have. And so you honor God where you're at, and it qualifies you for more. It will grow you up. That's how you grow by doing the Word and engaging where you're at and honoring God with what you have, that you're going to grow. And it's, you're going to go through uh, the process of just the consistency and the faithfulness. And like we read, he said, all right, you've qualified yourself for more. You're growing. Mm -hmm. You have something to say. You've, you've gotten for that. Now he's saying you're going you're gonna to rule over more. You grow where you're planted, where God puts you. That's where you're saying, well, okay, I'm going. I'm going up here. I'm going to do what I, I'm going to grow here. Don't wait. Don't ever use where you're at as a stepping stone to where you think you're going. Well, I'm just doing this for now, but I, when I get there, then I'll really put in the time. You disqualified yourself right there. You put in, you'd put in the time where you're at, where I'm at. We do what we need to do now, today. Put God's things first now. Well, when I got the time, I'll put God's things first. Yeah. Doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work that way. We, we put God first with where, what we have, and we make the adjustments we need to make in order to put Him first. 
well, I mean, this, there's this and this, so I just can't. You know, no. We, what is our decision? Because everybody has the same. Everybody does, life doesn't look the same, but we all have the opportunity to honor God. And so we have to do that uh, with where we're at and say, God, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to put you first. You'll never regret that. Regret that. You, you will never regret putting him first. But we can use all kinds of reasons or excuses. You know, somebody said this. Well, let me read the. Let me read this first. Um, well, re- let's read Luke nine fifty seven. We'll comment on it. May have to just pick up next week. Got more to say here on this, but. Um, Luke 9, 57 says, Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Verse 59, Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead but you go and preach the kingdom of God. said, Lord, let, let me first go and bury my father. That sounds like a pretty good thing. I mean, that's an excuse, right? I mean, that's a reason. And he said, let the, the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And verse 61, and another said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. And Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You got two people that are saying, well, let me go do this first, then then I'll get with you, then then I'll follow you, Then, then I'll do it. In other words, I have something to do now, but let me do this and then I'll follow you. And And Jesus said, in both cases... He said, in the first case, you know, let, uh, let the, bury, the dead bury their own dead. And the second one, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, when you start, you don't look back. In other words, there's always going to be a distraction. Always. There's always going to be things vying for our time. Always. In this earth, you're not going to get to a place where it's just everybody just leaves you alone and it's all quiet and it's like right in front of you there. Just serve God now because it's all clear. In this earth, it's not going to happen. There, is, there are always things that are vying for your time and trying to distract you, trying to distract me. What do you need to do? You need to push all that stuff away and say, God, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to do, do what you want me to do and be faithful right here, right now, in the middle of where I am. I'm not going to wait for everything to clear up. I'm going to clear it up. I'm going to push it aside. I will make the time to do what you said now. I'm not going to wait for circumstances to line up for me to do it. I'm pushing through now and making it. Because if we wait, time just keeps going. It just keeps going. And we're waiting for what? The world that's ruled by the devil to line up so we can serve God? If all this stuff, this noise would cease so that I could just get on with what God told me to do, it's not going to happen. We're going to have to push through and say, I'm doing it. God, I'm putting you first now. I don't care. Well, that might mean, there, see, there's a push. Sometimes you come up against a wall. Well, that means I'm going to have to, something's going to change. Something looks like I'm going to lose something. You will never lose with God. You will never lose with God. God, You do what God told you to do and put Him first. Uh, there will always... I don't think I have my fourth page. Could you put up... Um, uh, do I, did I give you 1 Samuel? 2 verse 30? I didn't print it out. Therefore, the, the part that I want you to see, go um, to the second one. It says, those who honor me, I will honor. 
those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. But he said, those who honor me, I will honor. God's not going to be a debtor to any person. Never. Oh, well, you honored me, but I couldn't get around to it, didn't have the funds, just I couldn't work it, I'm sorry. That's never going to happen. He said, you honor me, you'll be honored. Back in uh, Luke 9.62, in the Living Translation, what we just read, where he said, uh, having put his hand to the plow and looking bad is not fit for the kingdom of God. In the Living Bible, it says, Jesus told him, anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work I planned for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. Notice it says, now this is a paraphrase, but it, it, it bears witness with what we read. Anyone who lets himself be distracted, lets himself be distracted from the, from what I, from the plan of God, uh, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. The message, it says, no procrastination, no, no backward looks. You can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow. Seize the day. In other words, you be faithful where you're at. You do what you need to do now. Because there will always be something that's distracting us. It's just a matter of how much pull those things have on us. They're always there. It's just a matter of how much pull they have on us at any given time. They won't go away. It's just a matter of us doing what we need to do so they don't have a pull on us. Put God's things first. There may be a pull. There will be a pull. If you're getting out of something and you decide to put God's things first, there will be a pull to try to get you to go back to where you were. I mean, yes, that's true of sin, but it's also true of you just laying down something that's not necessarily sin in itself, but it's getting in the way of you doing what you need to do. And if you change and you say, God, I'm honoring you, I'm going to do this, there will be a pull trying to get you to go bad. There will be thoughts that try to say you're missing it or you should go back here. There will be that, and we have to resist them and say, no, I'm doing what God told me to do. And over time, that will subside, and it won't bother you. If you carry on with God and His Word, it, there will be a time where it will not have that pull on you. Now, that doesn't mean you just float and you just... You dabble in things and go back and forth. If you go back and forth, you, you will get pulled again. But there's events that are going on probably right now, you know, in this area. We live in Boston, or, you know, in, in this area, or have in the last few weeks or whatever, huge events that people would... I'm talking about like a concert or a game or, or other things that, you know, convention that some of something that people are really into, that if that certain people don't know anything about and it has zero pull on them. Like, did you know so-and-so is in town? Who's that? It has zero, it doesn't have any pull whatsoever. You don't even know who they are. Well, there's this artist in the, or there, there's, you know, this huge convention of stuff and they love that stuff. And you're like, I don't even know what that, what is that activity? But for them to lay that down is a huge thing for you. You don't even know what it is. So it doesn't have any pull on you. We'll see if we'll just do what God tells us to do pretty soon. Those, the things that used to pull on us become like that. And what is important? Serving Him. We put that first. These things that used to pull on us, distract us. We're like, no. No, we're going to do what you're faithful. What do you, you're being faithful now. See, it's so easy to relegate to the future. We're relegating our growth. We're talking about being transformed. We want to be transformed and be jumped to here. But right now we have decisions to make that's going to get us here. But it starts now. It's not next year. It's not three years from now. Now we can say, I'm doing it. I'm starting the process. I'm moving this forward so that I can keep moving with God. And we're going to grow, and you're going to grow, and you're going to look back and say, man, I'm in such a different place. Why? Because you were being faithful where God put you. And you're counting on Him to help you. And if God, if you're following Him and His Word, you're, count, you're following what He told you to do, He will be faithful to help you through it. He'll be, he'll, he'll be faithful to help you. Doesn't mean you're not going to get pulled. You will get pulled. You will get pushed. You know, just talk about something as simple as, as going to church on Sunday or, or Wednesday. If somebody is completely out of that realm, say like you guys that are here, you, you're, you're here on a, on a Wednesday. So you had to do something to get here. Well, on a Sunday, some people... Uh, you know, as if they're used to never coming, just using this as an illustration, on a Sunday, 
they're going to have to push through some stuff in order to get there because their, their normal routine is going to push up against them when they go. It might work for a Sunday or two, but then something's going to happen where I want to go back to that. I'm used to sleeping. I'm used to doing this activity, whatever, right? But there's some point where you just go. If you keep doing it, it's just, no, I do this and the other stuff. You may have the thought. You may even not want to wake up, but you're like, no, I'm going. So it doesn't have a big push on you. You're going to be faithful and you're going to keep going. Same thing on a Wednesday. Same thing on, on, that is the same in every area. It could pull on you for a while, but when you just make up your mind, I'm doing it, I don't care, then could you ever have a thought? Sure, you just have to refute it. But when you're making the transition, it's easy. You just take a little bit off. It's easy to go back. It's easy to go. To, so it's easy to get to get off and and to be pulled by something. So, but there's something about being faithful and pushing through and just keeping on, keeping on. That gives you the ability to grow where you couldn't before because God is helping. He'll give His grace. His grace is there to help you, but you're getting stronger because you are making the decision to stay with God. And you exercising faith, you see how you were able to do it, which gives you the ability and the foundation to do it in other areas. And where He's done that, you say, this will be just like this other thing, and we're going to do it, and we're going to stay faithful, and you see God help you. And that allows you to grow and gives God the ability to help you through it to where you are being transformed. And he's faithful to do it. But it's, but it's today. It's for every one of us now. It looks different for every person, but it's right now. Yeah. Doesn't have to be three years from now. It's just it, That's exciting to me because it's like, okay, God, which, which part you want? What do you want me to do? Because I'm moving and I, I'm going on your path. Yeah. Because there is nothing higher than you hearing what God tell you, what, he, what this, this master told to these servants. Well done you good and faithful servant. There isn't anything higher on the earth, and there's nothing that is worth being distracted over. That is the highest. So right now, we can push in and just let God grow us up by being faithful where we are. Grow where you're planted. Amen?